what's up Dan fans welcome to my channel tonight we're taking a look at the Dorenzo DRZ 04 version 2 Mondial in this really cool looking red color and this watch was purchased oh sorry camera uh, this watch was purchased at the micro brand store um, I believe the website is just microbrand.store, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, <clears throat> this is a Swiss-made watch, but it was actually shipped from Japan. And I received it after about five days. And so far, I am pretty darn impressed with this watch. Uh, I paid $7.25. And what you get for your money is really just exceptional uh the fit and the finish the design of the watch um i'll go over all those little things today but yeah let's suffice it to say I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this thing especially for the price point um let's try to clean it up it is kind of a smudge magnet but first things first let's have a look at this dial oh and i should say Rocking the Juno today. Just seemed like a good fit. Micro brand and micro brand. So I decided I was going to go with the red dial. Um, mostly because I don't own a red dial watch. And I actually bought this watch. I'm not sure 100% if I'm going to keep it. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in just a little while. But um, yeah, I'm very impressed with what they've done here. Uh, it's a Swiss-made watch, and unlike some Swiss-made watches, apparently this one is actually made in Switzerland. And I really appreciate that. That's that's really cool. Um, you just never know what you're going to get these days. You know, with the Swiss-made moniker at the bottom of that pie pizza dish uh, dial. You know, I guess the way it goes is 60% of the cost of the watch has to be uh, uh, incurred in Switzerland. And what that means is, you know, it's very easy for these companies to source their cases and their bracelets and, you know, a number of other parts for the, for the watch from overseas, bring them to Switzerland and assemble them. And the labor costs alone uh, tied in with the movement, which is often like a Salida or an Etta, is enough to get it over that 60% um, mark in order to get that Swiss made badge on the bottom. But uh, yeah, word on the streets, this one's actually made in Switzerland. So that's, that's awesome. Um, I'm not sure I can say that about really any of my Swiss watches. I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming my Omega is, you know, at least in large part a Swiss made watch. Uh, Christopher Ward, I have a feeling a lot of their parts come from overseas just because of well, because of the price point and because of what you're getting for the money and just, it's just a gut feeling, you know, honestly. But whatever, I digressed. Um, let's take a look at this crown. I really like this crown. It's got that Dorenzo logo on it there. It's really nicely etched. It's very deeply etched, actually. Um, but one thing I really like about this is it's not an onion style crown, but it is kind of rounded. And it's actually very easy to grip because of that kind of rounded shape of it. Um, the knurling is excellent in the crown. Get a little close up there. Very good. Um, it unwinds very nicely. Um, I'll go ahead and unwind it for you. Pops right out. Uh, it's very, very solid. There's no movement. It winds nicely. It winds like a Salida. Um, and then when you go to screw it back in, it threads up like a champ. Um, it actually has quite a few turns to lock it into place. And I keep hitting my camera. There we go. You guys getting dizzy yet or what? Um, take a look at those hands. It's a very unique handset. I want to say that I like it. It may need to grow on me a little bit. It almost looks like a couple of Eiffel Towers or something. Um, but in the center, you can see how much material there is there. It really shines in the light. It's pretty nice. Um, and it's interesting. At nighttime, it, it works great. 
uh, and I'll get some loom shots just a little bit later. Uh, back to that dial. So it's kind of like a, it's like a dish. You know, I think it's a machined part too. Um, I don't know if they do it on a lathe or with maybe a CNC, um, but it's one piece and it's really nice the way they did the rehot. It, it slopes upward from the, the uh, dial and it gives it this kind of depth that you don't get on other watches. And one thing I will say is the red is very vibrant in the middle, um, but in real life, it's much darker on the outside. And the way that the Fume, it's gradual, you know, from the center on out, but in real life, that sloping dial really gives it a cool kind of um, contrast from the outside to the inside. Uh, you get the minute markers, which perfectly align with that little uh, loom pip on the second sand, and uh, they make it very nice to be able to read what, you know, where you're at with your seconds, your minutes, and your hours. It lines up perfectly with the hour hand and um, it just looks really good. The loom is excellent on this watch. And like I said earlier, I'll go ahead and get you guys some loom shots, but what I'll say is that while there's not a ton of it, it is packed in there, so it's very bright. Um, the little date window at the bottom is kind of cool. It's a little hard to read from far away, but for as small as it is, it's surprisingly legible. And I thought on the version two, uh, that we were going to get a color mash date wheel, but I don't really miss it. Um, it actually contrasts nicely. You have the Dorenzo round logo on the top and a much bigger uh, loom plot at 12 o'clock than you do at 6 o'clock, but that little touch of white down there with that smaller plot just it really ties it together nicely. Uh, there's a tiny little bit of a window. Um, it's like a like a stainless steel border on the little date window there. And it's very nicely done. And you probably just saw it, but that second hand, it, it's like an eclipse over that little round part there. And I've never seen that on another watch before, but I think that's a nice little attention to detail in this watch. And it was obviously very well thought out. Uh, the top of the case is a vertical brushing, which transfers down to this very steep drop off this kind of Gerald Genta design you know like you'd see on a PRX or you know a number of different watches use that similar design um, some of them upwards of fifty to a hundred thousand um, dollars but it's very telltale you can tell when you look at it what was it inspired by you know there's plenty of watches out there that inspired this one um, the bezel is really cool let me see if I can show you guys here I'll do a little down the barrel but you can see the bottom of that bezel actually slopes inward a little bit before it slopes, um, you know, and the bottom it slopes inward and the top it slopes inward. So it's, it's kind of like a, a Seiko Sarb, how it slopes inward at the bottom of the bezel. Pretty cool. Uh, there's a radial brushing on the top of the bezel. Very nicely done. And the sides of the bezel are, are um, polished so it looks great there's a chamfer on the top and it's all the way around you can kind of see how it's polished 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 and then polished underneath as well and those are the little attentions to detail in this watch that are that really make it something special especially for the price point and for being a you know a swiss made watch um just really really cool so those are some of the things I like about this watch. And then the dial, you can see it's a, a radial sunburst, which just looks great. Um, so those are a few things I really like about this watch. It's very slim, 11 and a half millimeters from top to bottom. So it sits very flat on the wrist. Moving on to the bracelet, we have polished center links, um, satin tops, and very nice polishing on every edge of the links. So the links themselves sit very comfortably on the wrist. Um, the clasp, let's see, so at the top, it's like 26 millimeters from left to right. Tapers pretty dramatically uh, down to 19 millimeters at the clasp. And you have this butterfly, which is pretty awesome. It's got 
Very nice perlage going on there. Um, I will say, there's a couple little nitpicks here. This to me feels just a little bit loose, moves around a little bit, and probably my biggest you know, nitpick with this watch is that you don't get any half links, and it's not necessarily an issue for everybody, but for me it is an issue because I can't seem to get a good fitment on my 7.5 inch wrist. So if you have a 7.5 inch wrist too, uh, this configuration may not be the best for you. I did go ahead today and order the, you know, diver style clasp for this watch, uh, which should be here pretty soon. I was actually under the impression it came with this watch and you could just interchange them as you pleased, but I guess you have to order it. So I went ahead and ordered that and I'm hoping that that will make this watch fit me a lot better because the way it is right now, I'm going to take a look at my wrist. Um, it's not, you know, it's not perfect. That's for sure. But it could be. I think it could It could be a winner. And uh, so I'm going to give it a chance with that other clasp and see if that makes a difference. And to be honest, like the only butterfly clasp I own that I really like is my Omega Seamaster Aquaterra. Um, this clasp is very reminiscent of my Mito Multifort. Now it is more comfortable than that for some reason, although it's very similar. Uh, it is more comfortable, so... It's a comfortable watch by nature. You know, it's very rounded everywhere. It, it, it's soft feeling and it should be comfortable. So I'm really hoping that class makes a big difference. But let's see what else. We're affixed by screws. They are slightly recessed and very easy to remove. And then they're slightly recessed on the other side as well. So that's nice. Um, you do have push pins right here to be able to remove the bracelet. Um, one thing I'm kind of confused about is everybody on YouTube seems to be talking about how version 2 was going to come with um, strap tool apertures in the sides. Obviously that's not the case here, although those are apertures right there. Uh, but I thought they were going to be in the case. But to be honest, I actually think it looks cleaner and more uniform without those. So I'm okay with it. I'm just confused because that's what everybody kept saying. At first I was like, did I not get a version 2? But no, it's, it's definitely version 2. Maybe they made some um, mid-model changes or something or just didn't like the way it looked and decided to keep it without the holes. Either way, I'm cool with it because it's a beautiful watch and it doesn't necessarily need to have holes drilled in the lugs. It won't make it look any better. It might make it easier to swap the strap, but whatever. I can use my tools. It actually comes with a tool. A really nice tool, by the way. Uh, maybe I'll try to grab that if I pause here for a minute. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really wanted to say about this thing. Let's take a look here. A little closer look at that clasp, huh? I want to say maybe this clasp is manufactured by a company, maybe the same company that makes the one for Mita. I'll have to take a look because it does look very, very similar. Although it is a little more comfortable, I think. Um, all right, guys, so let me pause the video real quick. I'm going to pull this bracelet off of here so we can get a little better look at the case back and the bracelet itself. And then we'll do some limb shots. So stand by. Okay, we're back. So first things first, let's take a look at this bracelet here. Uh, I took the liberty of bringing down the Mito just so we can... Kind of take a look and compare and contrast. Um, obviously the mechanism is very similar there, so I'm just going to go ahead and assume that this is made by the same company. Although the push buttons look a little different, they still have the same kind of like spring design to them. And the way that they operate is very similar. So although they look different, maybe it is the same company that makes those, but uh, not particularly important. Um, it's a very nice bracelet though, huh? It's all nicely sat and finished. There's little gaps in between there so it doesn't pull hair or pinch. Um, I'm going to try to keep this part short because I'm already kind of going long here. But you can see the way those little spring bars go in. Yeah, very nice. Uh, they're tiny spring bars. Huge lengths. 
tiny little sprinkler. Let's have a look at the back of this guy here. So that little Dorenzo logo is painted, I believe, on the underside of the crystal. Uh, the back crystal is sapphire, so that's great. Um, don't have to worry about it getting scratched. Designed by Sergio G. Dorenzo, Swiss made, 100 meter water resistant, which is awesome. I try to get watches that are at least 100 meters or more um, because, you know, I just take them swimming sometimes and it's better to be safe than sorry, you know. That's the inside of those kind of funky lugs there. That's yeah, nicely done. Very cool. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Oh, real quick. Uh, I thought this was sent to me by Dorenzo. This is sent by the micro brand store. So if you buy a watch from them, you get this nice little spring bar tool. And uh, spring bar tool on one side and then a little poker on the other. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right, I'm going to pause this, put it back together, and we'll be right back for some wrist and some loom shots. All right, guys. Let's do a quick weigh-in here. Uh, okay, we're at zero. We are coming in at 143.4 grams. So pretty hefty, honestly, for this type of watch. We'll chalk it up to those giant lugs, huh? And those giant end links, rather. Um, all right, let me pop this on the wrist real quick. We'll take a look. Scotia. All right, so seven and a half inch wrist. And you can see uh, the size of the watch is just about perfect for my wrist. I have big hands also, so that helps. But um, we got a 52 millimeter lug to lug with this watch, and that's that's pretty long. Um, so I don't know. I wouldn't recommend this for wrists probably smaller than six inches around. Um, but it is, it has potential to be an extremely comfortable watch. Uh, it's just a little snug on me. And if I were to put a full link on there, then it would be loose enough to just kind of wiggle around on my wrist. And I don't like to wear my watches like that, but look at that profile, 11 and a half millimeters tall, easily fits under a cuff. Um, yeah, so. They did a great job with this watch, guys. I would recommend you purchase one of these if you're on the fence. Uh, I think it's a good one, honestly. It's a good buy. So, all right. Um, let me pause this again real quick, and we'll come right back for some loom shots. Stand by. One moment. Okay, here we go. Let me go ahead and charge these puppies up. I brought the Genoa out just to kind of compare and contrast, and... You know, that's sort of the king of loom. Um, but I don't know. In terms of just sheer intensity, the Dorenzo may have it beat. But let's take a look. That's pretty darn bright. They're both, both just crazy bright watches. It's going to be hard to tell which one is uh, the better of the two. Uh, obviously, the Juno is going to be the one that's going to be more legible all night long. And, um, but I can tell you from the naked eye, the intensity of the loom is pretty comparable here. I'm guessing it's just the exact same loom. So they did a good job with that. Um, I'll just go ahead and set this down for now because we, we're not here for that tonight. But look at those little Eiffel Towers on there. Isn't that kind of nifty? They're just floating in space. I like that. I think it looks really cool. Um, obviously, orientation is no problem. And it's got a pretty massive loom pip on the seconds hand. So it's a, it's a joy to wear. I mean, I, I kind of walked around with the lights off just to try to see if I could tell what time it was, because I'm a nerd. And uh, yeah, no problems there. So nice job on the loom, Dorenzo. Very good. 
Um, all right, guys, so I'm going to shut this one down. I really appreciate you watching. Everybody have a wonderful weekend. And until the next one, we'll see you later. Bye now.